Density, section on physical properties of fluids. First off, we are going to define density. What is density? The easiest way to think of density is a quantity of something, a quantity of matter inside a certain volume. The way we define density is mass divided by volume. So the mass of the particles inside a certain volume. Now here we have a cube that is one meter tall, one meter deep and one meter wide. So the volume of this cube would be one meter cubed. So it would be, the volume would be one meter cubed. If we say that each of these balls is one kilogram, we can see that the density of this material would be four kilograms per one meter cubed. So if we have more of these balls, for example, like here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we have double the balls, it would be eight kilograms per meter cubed. So how many balls are packed tightly together in this cube defines our density. Now these balls can be atoms, they can be molecules. Density is basically a measure how tightly packed are molecules of matter. Now in this course series we are going to use SI units and in SI units the unit for density is kilograms per meter cubed. So how heavy is the matter we are talking about when you put it inside a one meter cubed cube? To better understand the values of densities, here we have a table of different material densities. We denote density with the lowercase Greek letter rho. If we observe a cube full of air, and for example, this cube again is one meter tall, one meter deep and one meter wide. And we fill it with air on atmospheric pressure. The mass of the air inside of this cube would be 1.225 kilograms. If we take the same geometry, so the same shaped cube, and we fill it with water, for example, the same size of the cube is going to be around 1000 times heavier. So it is going to be around 1000 kilograms. Now on the other side, if we take one of the most valued materials in the world, if we take gold and we make a cube of the same geometry out of gold, it would weigh somewhere around 19,300 kilograms. So 19.3 metric tons. Here we have some values. So we can see that oil, for example, has a lower density than water. Now let's get to soup. I don't know about you, but I really enjoy eating soup. Where I live, we eat a lot of soup, beef, chicken, vegetable soup. And whenever you get a plate or a bowl of soup, you can see these spots floating around on top of your dish. Now, it's swimming on top of the, the vegetables, on top of the water, which is the main ingredient of soup. So what are these and why do they float? Well, this is oil or fat, and it has a lower density than water. Because this is not a culinary course, but a course in fluid mechanics, we are going to talk why does oil and fat float on the surface of the soup. Well, if we take a look at densities of water and oil, so density of oil is around 900 kilograms per meter cubed, and the density of water is around 1000 kilograms per meter cubed. So oil is around 10% less dense than water. Even though intuitively, when we look at oil, we see it as thicker. And sometimes we can, we can maybe think of oil as denser, more heavy than water. This is not the case. The reason why 
oil flows, uh, let's say, heavier or thicker is because of viscosity, not density. So the fact is we can't really see density with our eyes unless you try to pick up the fluid or you weigh it or you layer it. There is no way of knowing which fluid is denser. And here we have a little test tube with two fluids. So the first fluid has a smaller density than the second fluid. So the first fluid is going to be on top of the more dense fluid. If you don't believe me, you can do this experiment at home. I have a test tube that I first filled with vegetable oil and then I added water. You can see how water being more dense forms these bubbles and falls down. This is of course because water and oil are not soluble in each other. Water is a polar solvent and oil is non-polar. Now we can see that water fell down to the bottom of the test tube. Even if I shake the test tube, the horizontal line between water and oil is still evident. So going back to the soup example, you can see why this happens. We have to talk a little bit about the impact of temperature on density of fluids. And then we will see how a change in temperature can result in change in altitude. Now this could be done. The only problem is that honey is soluble in water. So you have to make sure when you pour honey that you pour the water slowly so it doesn't get mixed with honey. Honey here is the most dense fluid. Now the effect of temperature on density. Now the density of a substance is defined by mass per unit volume. We already said that. Now this can be affected significantly by temperature. Generally, as the temperature of a substance increases, the density decreases. This relationship is due to the thermal expansion of materials. Why does this happen? Well, let's take a closer look. Now here we have a cube and we have some particles inside of it. So we have a material that has a certain density. Okay. So we have a limited volume and we have a certain number of molecules. In other words, we have a density value of six of these per this cube. These molecules have certain speeds and lengths per which they chaotically move. Now at a certain temperature, let's say room temperature, which is around 20 degrees Celsius. These molecules are going to move at a certain speed and a certain length. When they move like this, they still fit in this cube that we defined as the volume of our density. The volume for our density. So they are well in between the limits of this volume. However, what happens when we add heat? Now, the same system, we only added heat. No, not the movie Heat from 1995 by Michael Mann. I'm talking about thermal energy. Energy in the form of heat. Although it is a great movie, I recommend it. It does have Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. So, we add some external energy to this system. What happens is that these molecules start to behave differently. They have more speed, they travel longer distances, and what we get by them doing so is that we get much less molecules inside of the confines of the volume we took as a reference volume. Less molecules in the reference volume means less density of the matter that we are observing, no matter the state of matter. But this principle is most evident in hot air balloons. How do they fly? How do they lift up? Now, outside we have normal air temperature, which is of a higher density. And these hot air balloons are called hot air balloons for a reason. They have burners here that burn and heat up air inside of the balloon. Now, heated air is what? Increased air temperature means lower density. 
lower density means rising to the top. And this is how hot air balloons work. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next lesson.